Hey everyone. Hey everybody. Sorry for the late start. Got our teas here on Marriage we, Mondays. On Marriage Mondays teas. What do teas have to do with Marriage Mondays? We don't know, but it just tastes really good to drink tea. Well, grab a tea and or coffee. We're tea people, and have a tea with us while we chat. Um, yeah, we were uh, again. Apologize for the for the uh, late start. We had a couple of complications that we had to uh, see to. But here we are. And before we go any further, why don't we just um, uh, why don't we just open up in a quick word of prayer before we do? Because I don't know about you, Dana, but I certainly could use God's help in every moment of my day. So can I. So there you have it. We're unanimous. We need God's help in every moment of the day. <laughs> uh, okay, so Lord, we just want to say thanks for this chance to get together um, with uh, people that you love and people that you want to be of help to, people that um, it is right that you should be glorified by their lives. And uh, Lord, we ask that you just help us to understand. We ask that through your Holy Spirit, our helper, the helper and the one who guides us into all truth that you'd help us to understand and to be changed by that which would glorify you Jesus. and would help us uh, thanks God in Jesus name amen, amen. so um, we were talking uh, uh, before the last with the last video uh, about this and we uh, um, uh, and we had some interesting responses, and we just wanted to make a quick comment at the beginning. I have the hardest time. I always want to look at the at the screen. at the screen, and I remember that I have to look up here somewhere. Uh, um, so it's hard. Got to find out. We should put a little picture of an eye there, or something, so we have an eye to look at. Uh, but they look, I'm, I'm taller than you. Hey, you're tall. Okay, this won't do. Um, <clears throat> And there were some concerns that were raised before on the topic, and, and they're very valid concerns uh, and points to be raised. Uh, you know, what about if if we're if the if the person is in uh, an abusive situation, even possibly life-threatening situation, uh, certainly uh, a damaging, immediately physically, psychologically, emotionally damaging situation? Um, what about uh, what about that kind of a situation? And um, so we want to clarify something uh, uh, up front for you guys. Um, this conversation, this ongoing conversation that we're having is not a, not, is not a, what was the phrase we used? Uh, not a crisis, crisis. forum. Yeah. Not a crisis forum. Um, and uh, in, in that, that is not the, on one hand, that is not the goal that we set up for the forum. It's more of a teaching and uh, forum, more of a sharing forum, uh, more of a, hey, let's pursue the Lord on this topic together kind of forum. But we will say this, it, it, it is a very uh, serious situation when there is uh, abusiveness going on. And although psychological and emotional aren't as devastatingly imminent in their in their threat as physical abuse um they are still also very much a, a very uh potent problem and need, needs to be addressed Absolutely. and it needs to be addressed in a way that is healthy and in a way that uh, is effective and provides the help in the time frames that the help is needed and um uh, and so, but that's not what this forum is about. So let us say this, um, that is a problem that needs to be interacted with biblically. And so we will encourage you by saying this, if you're in that kind of a situation, get yourself safe, yeah. get yourself some help. Because uh, typically we are not necessarily um, naturally wired to be an island in those moments, though we want to sometimes hermit away or hide the reality or protect ourselves or somebody else through through whatever uh, kind of means. But the reality is, is we do need help and we do need to get help. But to handle even that biblically, um, if you if it's immediate physical threat, then get help, maybe involve the police. Uh, and uh, certainly if you are a believer, 
then involve your church leadership right away. Uh, biblical wise uh, church leadership, get biblically wise and accurate uh, counseling, uh, uh, counsel, well, I am counseling, but counsel, not selfish advice giving. Uh, because even us Christians are not immune from reacting emotionally to a hard situation, reality, but you need to get biblical counsel, wise counsel, counsel that takes into the reality the eternal um, uh, ingredients of the situation and get help. With, uh, so police, church leadership, um, wise and discerning people, and, and get yourself safe. There's we, some good godly Christian crisis centers out there too. Yeah, that you can um, that you can access. Um, and there's still even hope for that kind of a situation, as Scripture uh, talks about. Um, um, but and we will go into on a concept level uh, at uh, soon uh, at some point on on the concept of that kind of a situation. But uh, this predominantly right now is not a crisis forum. Uh, so get the help that you need through the channels that are available to you. And we will uh, handle that on a concept level um, and a sharing level uh, at some point, just not right now. Uh, okay. So that being said, that being said, Dana, that being said, Rory, um, let's, uh, let's dive in. And I think it's the first, the first concept that we need to consider is, is really the platform. It's really the foundation. You don't go into a house that's there from the ground floor and up, you know, uh, without there being a frame, without there being a frame for the roof. The roof doesn't just hover there. There has to be a, a frame that supports it and holds it in place. And um, uh, there isn't, without a, without a, uh, in a multi-level uh, house, there's not a top level without a bottom level, without a basement, without a foundation to it. Uh, cause that which is built without foundation doesn't have a habit of sticking around for too long. It usually crumbles and hopefully you're not in there or underneath it when it goes. Uh, so this truth that, uh, we thought, uh, we, we were talking about it and, and prayerfully considering it. And it really is the foundational level for anything else that we will talk about, uh, after now. And that is, um, what is marriage and who is it for? Um, I think one of the problems that we ran into was that very question. We didn't answer that before we went into our marriage. No, nope. I know I did. Well, I, well, you know what, actually, in we a, talked about expectations in premarital. I remember yeah, Darren yeah. talking to us about expectations, but I don't think that we fully grasped. I think Darren did a great job in premarital with us. Um, but I think just we didn't fully grasp it, what that would look like. What, what were my expectations that he would, that he would, well, I had these expectations that he would be like my dad, you know, really. And, and, and the point is, and this connects to the, the reality of who's it for, uh, hey, when, when we're not, you oh, your oh tea. hold on. You gotta have your tea. Hold I haven't drinking my tea. It's pretty mm. yummy. Tea. Yeah. I think, um, I think Tim Horton should give us, you know, we're plugging them here, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Timmy. Um, but the reason why we have expectations is because we've already uh, um, expectations for ourselves in it and where and we fail them for the other person because we already are not we're we're separating ourselves from what marriage is for to begin with and who it's for to begin with, because um, most of my expectations were how were based around how I wanted you to be for me. I wanted a wife who would be I want a wife who would do. I want a wife who would say, and so on. And so I put you're this saying on. I wasn't perfect for you. Is that what you're saying? You like only missed one thing. One. That's what one I One thing. You got 99.9% .9 of the, you know, uh, but um, <laughs> uh, uh, almost. <laughs> almost. Uh, but so this this thing w was established. Um, uh, on the flip side, it, it kind of I did in some way think about it because I thought it was for me. And And what I needed to realize was that, and what, you need to realize and what we all need to realize is who is this marriage for? Because the God that we think we have will be the God that we will try and serve in a way that we think he will accept the marriage that we believe that God actually wants us to have or will let us have 
is the marriage that we'll try and have even careful now careful dana you're holding on i am okay uh even if we have to tantrum to get it oh that's now, convicting to me. i mean that's that's <laughs> that's just that's just worth the price of admission right there people uh, I but, can be a bit of a tantrumer. But and and, and, and not as so, bad as it used to be though. I, I've come a long way. Well, I mean, we we both have made progress Praise by God's grace, right? Praise and and not of my own doing. Uh, but uh, so if we understand from the beginning who the marriage is for, and and God gives us because uh, who the marriage is for is how we will align our participation in in that marriage if we understand who, who it's for. If I realized that this marriage, though we're in it, actually belongs to God who gave it, then I would have been treating you different from the get-go, yeah. you know? And it's not just about the, you know, the thing that we say from the, you know, I'm here and before all these people and, da, 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 and all these things that are said that are supposed to be taken seriously. Uh, but I wasn't taking them that seriously. And the fact that I was just glad to be married and I just wanted to hurry up so I could go on with the marriage that I wanted. Uh, and so, um, but so if this is for God and we know that it's for God because, and we've got our scribble note page of, of things just to help us stay on track. Are we staying on track? I think so. Yeah. I, can I add something in there? You can add something in there. I'm going to have Funny. my tea. This is me having it, tea while you talk. Go it ahead. just, it makes me think of back to the beginning of our marriage. Like we would go out to dinner together. And uh, I I wanted Rory to know what I wanted. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, can you read my mind? Or to be the one to always pay, or to be the one to just know, like, know what I wanted to know. Um, yeah, make sure it can know see things me. to know things about me. And I would get offended because he didn't know. Um, he, he couldn't read my mind. I'm like, come on, like he was supposed to be that answer for. That thing we talked about last time about being a prince, right? To be the one who would save the day by making me feel complete, making me feel loved. And I was putting the role of Jesus, which Rory does portray within the marriage, but I was giving what only Jesus could fill in me. I was trying to fill through Rory, but it wasn't my expectations on him. There were things that that yeah they're nice but why would i then treat him bad because he went to the store and bought the wrong thing like i would i would get so upset because what did this mean about me what did this mean about how he was seeing me and how he thought about me and it was everything was coming about me when instead of looking to jesus and lord what can i learn through this okay he forgot about this but but is it really about me is this marriage about me and what I'm supposed to get out of it. But you weren't alone in that, though. I wasn't. Well, that's good. Praise the Lord. You, oh. you, uh, I was doing the same thing. Not that I want you to be in sin, but I mean, I'm just. <laughs> well, misery loves company, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, but uh, actually, um, but I mean, I remember this conversation that God had with me when I was coming to him and complaining to him about uh, Dana and you know wanting him because i was absolutely sure that if god would fix dana then our marriage would be fixed and and little did i know uh but uh i remember talking to him and all of a sudden god said put in my heart he said uh you didn't think that this marriage was for you did you did you um and I said, in my in my ego and in my self orientation, my self absorption, I said, well, yeah, I'm the one that's married to her, and who is she married to? Well, she's married to me, so I'm the common principle in both of those things. So yeah, I I I, I think it's for me. And he said, no, it's for me. You know, the, the this the moment that God gives us instruction in His Scripture, He said, I will. He, he goes, I will bless you in it the people in the marriage i will bless and i've committed to bless him but the marriage actually belongs to me and reflects eternal realities that are about my kingdom they're about my uh, my people and me my the the relationship between the church the body of christ and the bridegroom the bridegroom uh jesus christ 
And any time that you act in a way with Dana that my son doesn't act with the church means you're showing other people a Jesus that doesn't exist, which is idolatry. You're helping them become idolaters for people who are watching your marriages. And let me tell you, let us tell you, we're telling them. Yes. Yeah. Well, you people are, are always watching. <laughs> people are always watching. You're in a goldfish bowl and people are always watching. Mm -hmm. The world who needs a savior it, it is always watching to see what the Christians have to offer. And if it's solid enough and trustworthy enough and if it's legit. And and so, um, but the people watching, you, you are showing them Jesus, fellas. You're showing them Jesus. And when and, and I said, yeah, but what about she, when she's not doing her job? He says, well, what does Jesus do when the, when the church fails her job? Do what Jesus does with the church. Her failing at her job does not uh, affect how well Jesus does in his job. That's right. And so that's what defines our roles. The other person doesn't define our roles. And, and so. And same thing. If you're failing what I'm feeling, like you're failing me in a moment, does that mean that that gives me a right like if you, you you speak rudely to me on a day, which sometimes, you know, we both we're, we both have our flesh come out and we can be yeah. um, fleshy, um, fleshy, 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 and uh, we like call them conversations. Um, we uh, <laughs> when we're having a conversation and and Rory says something that's in a rude way. Does that mean that that gives me the right to then answer back rudely? Well, he was rude to me. It becomes like sibling rivalry. Right? Like you were with your siblings when you were kids. Well, mom, he did such and such, so that's why I did that. Or he was rude to me, so I was rude to him. Well, he hit me first. Yeah, I mean, what was your mom's response? Well, that doesn't give you the right. Well, that's the same thing in a marriage, right? It's the same thing. And and God God is is the best parent there is. He wants us to glorify him in everything I do. And everything I say, and everything I am, am I bringing glory to the Father? You yeah. know, I mean, it's 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 not about sibling rivalry. It's about bringing glory to God. And so today and this week, week that can even be a challenge, right? Yeah. And well, I mean, I mean, like it, the moment that God takes it to a it involves um, scripture in it, you know that it's gone from being just about you and your spouse to being an eternal concept. This lasts forever. Our decisions with our spouse last forever because it said, he says that he'll reward us for everything done in the flesh or while we're here on this earth, both good and bad. And the rewards that we get last forever, 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 sorry. And, and so, but I mean, I mean, no, like, it, like in this passage here in Ephesians 5 is a great chapter. It talks about, you know, what the woman is supposed to do because of, of her relationship with Christ, how she's supposed to treat her husband. It says, you know, uh, and husbands, you know, love your wives as who Christ loves the church. And, okay, so the moment that it compares, it, it, it lines up the man with Christ and it lines up the, the woman with the body of Christ, then immediately it's eternal, number one. And two, um, it then affects how we should interact with it based off of... Um, the then proper context for the marriage. So I love Jesus in how I interact with Dana, whether she's doing her job awesome or not. It's not even the issue. The issue is how is Jesus for Dana right now? Well, I need to be that lived out in our, in our, and how, what will Jesus accept from the body of Christ? Well, that's on Dana to, to reflect that. Uh, even here in, what is it? Sorry, I let me put my glasses on, everybody. First Corinthians fifteen forty six. Thanks, Dana. You're welcome, Ryan. Um, it tells us in First Corinthians fifteen, it says that things are first in the natural and then in the spiritual. So things on earth reflect uh, things that are eternal and in heaven. And this isn't the only spot where that is shown. Like it says, like the earthly tab uh, the tabernacle in the desert and the temples. Uh, and the temple later after that said um, uh, the Lord said that they were to reflect the the uh, the full on deal that was in heaven still, you know. And so like and so many different things that, the you know, the Bible talks about the marriage supper of the lamb uh, in Revelation. Was that 19? 19. Yeah, 19. 
uh, marriage supper of the lamb. Um, he's the bridegroom. We're the bride. Uh, and, and all these different things. So it's putting this situation on a divine perspective, on an eternal perspective. And so how I, even how we are not argue, but disagree, uh, even in how we differ in our approaches, it's still something that should be handled in a way that reflects eternal, uh, concepts and principles and realities. And, and so like even how we're to love another why first corinthians 13 because love covers a multitude of sins and and our marriage is reflecting even our salvation as soon as it's christ in the church then you know that salvation's in there because there's no other name whose name christ christ's name under by which man may be saved so our marriage is not only reflect heaven but it reflects our salvation relationship with our savior and so that's why uh it's illustrated in the scriptures so if this isn't handled right first if this isn't handled right first, who does the marriage belong to? Not who's in it, but because of who they belong to and who the covenant belongs to, who owns the relationship? So who should be blessed first and honored and glorified uh, in, in the relationship first? And then when that's handled from the get-go, uh, that deals with a lot of the petty stuff. That's, that, that's our flesh that we interact with. Uh, we, we simply wouldn't handle that way anymore because we realize this is about Jesus. This moment when, when Dana is frustrating me or when I'm uh, being harsh with her, th th this, is, uh, this is a Jesus moment. This isn't a me and her moment. And so we, we need to um, approach every moment like that. So what, what, was, what were you going to say, honey, about that? You were talking about a challenge or something or what, what were you going to? Well, you know, I, we were doing a Bible study with our kids this week and in the Bible study, the, the guy on there said, um, when this week, before you say anything, wait five seconds. He said, before you say anything, when you're angry, wait 10 seconds. And I thought, what a great challenge. And I challenge you with that this week, to wait before you speak, five seconds. To wait before you speak when you're angry for 10 seconds. Let the Lord change your heart and think, am I bringing glory to God in what I'm about to say? Yeah. How can I love you, how Jesus? how I'm saying it. And yeah. what I'm doing and what I'm even thinking, am I bringing glory to God and see how that affects your marriage. Um, we encourage you. We have to, we have to uh, skedaddle now, but we encourage you to skedaddle. leave us. I know it's an old school world. Word, Amazing. I'm an old school girl. <laughs> skedaddle. Um, so um, leave us a message, not in the comments, but in PMS, private oh, messages. Yes. yes. Um, we'd love to um, take some questions and tomorrow we'll come back on at 11 and answer one or two. If, if you leave us any questions um, and, um, yeah, and we'll be doing that on Tuesdays. So let us know this week, yes. too, how this challenge, I'd love to hear uh, testimonies, how this challenge affected your marriage this week. Did it affect it? How did God yes. change your heart? How did yes. he help you see things different when you took those 10 seconds, when you really thought about how am I going to bring glory to God? So bless you guys yes. on this Monday. May your marriages reflect the glory of God. And, uh, yeah, and, may you draw closer to him. And and. The Lord is worthy of the trust with your marriage. The Lord is worthy of the trust with your marriage in saying, Lord, I will have, I will be looked after. I will be loved. I will be vindicated where it's right that I should be. I will be defended within the context at its best when I am making the decision to love you through how I treat my spouse, even when they fail me, when they fail my expectations, when they treat me in a way that I know that I deserve better. Um, and so on. He is worthy of that trust, and and he will not betray your confidence. So be blessed. Have a great week. Let us know how this goes. We love you. The Lord yeah. loves you, and we we are believing for God's best for you and your life and your marriage. More of Him. Amen.